Hey, Fiona Rolls here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. So, we're still going through the first trial, and now we're on this added piece of evidence of what they think transpired in the channeling room. And, I don't know, things just have me confused. I'm just going to press everything and, and see what comes up. There is quite a difference in height between Mr. Gray, between Dr. Gray and the defendant. Added in body strength, it seems, and it seems unlikely the defendant could have stabbed the victim. Now that you mention it, yeah, I, I guess. Objection! You think you can get away with such flimsy reasoning, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Maya Faye was in the middle of channeling, was she not? Yeah, so? Then channeling with the Karayan channeling technique, the medium physically changes. Oh, you actually know that. With the nurse's bill, the defendant could have easily been a match for the doctor. The nurse's bill? I don't believe it. She even studied up on the crying channeling technique. Oh, she's thorough. Like I said before, I am perfect. Well, your father thought he was perfect too, but he wasn't. Um, oh, about what you were talking about, I didn't quite get it. Oh, um, never mind. Let's continue with the testimony. <laughs> of course, the victim used the loss of his strength to fight back. So, he was stabbed, but the stab wound didn't kill him. But if you think about the blood loss, it was pretty bad. How bad would you say it was? Actually, I went to give blood the other day. And afterward, I felt a little lightheaded and dizzy. I guess the damage was maybe about ten times the dizziness. Really? Sorry. <laughs> While the two were fighting, the victim took out his gun. Okay. Where in the world did that pistol come from? It looks like the victim, Dr. Gray, had specifically bought it for that day. Really? But a handgun? He got it off the black market about two days before the murder. The black market? Why did Dr. Gray bring a gun? Unless... Was he taking precautions against something? Maybe he was expecting that the nurse would try and kill him? The victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. So, you're saying that the bullet hole in this costume was made then? Sorry, pal, but that's just what I think. The two of them were already fighting when a shot was fired. Maya, I'm really glad you weren't hurt. Yeah, me too. The defendant then picked up the, on the opening and took the victim's gun and ended it. Maya has never fired a gun before in her life. It doesn't matter if the ghost has, then what does it matter if Maya has? The victim had already taken off the safety. The safety off, even an amateur like you can fire it by pulling the trigger. Even me? I wonder. You'd probably shoot yourself in the foot, Phoenix. Now, do you understand? A bond karma's logic is perfect. This testimony certainly makes us look very bad. But there's gotta be a contradiction in there somewhere. And uncovering it is going to uncover the truth. I can feel it. Hmm. Of course, the victim used the last of his strength to fight back while the two were fighting. The victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. Wait. Wait, but... I mean... I don't know. This, maybe? I don't know. Missing the tiny hole on this costume will be the prosecution's undoing. Huh? What do you mean? This little hole has actually created a huge hole in your testimony. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. You said the two of them were fighting when the victim fired his gun at point-blank. 
If that were true, then where's the gunpowder burn on this costume? Gunpowder burn? This is what you testified earlier. When something is shot from point blank, a burn area is left around the bullet hole. Oh! But there is not a single trace of gunpowder burn on this costume. That is a very good point. And what exactly does this mean? It means that when the shot was fired, they were standing apart from each other. Objection! I'm disappointed, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You think you can punch a hole in my logic with that? With wishy-washy thinking like that, anyone can explain anything away. Then I implore you to disprove my line of thinking. Let's see. In the middle of their fight, the victim pushed the defendant away. And it was then, when they were separated, that he fired. How was that? As if that was even possible. According to the testimony, the wound from the stabbing was very severe. The victim would not have had the strength to push the defendant very far after that. <laughs> gotcha. Well, then... That's right, the defendant must have pushed the victim away. After stabbing him, she must have put some space between the doctor and herself. And then, while she was preparing to strike again, the doctor took his shot. There, that should satisfy even you. Hmm, that does make an awful lot of sense. What do you think, Mr. Wright? You must be careful, I can't afford to make a mistake here. Concentrate and think. It makes sense? Something about it doesn't make sense. It's just contradict everything, and I don't know why. There is a fatal flaw in her argument, Your Honor. Fatal? Flaw? Yeah! Very interesting. I would love to see where this flaw is. Show me something that contradicts my explanation. There has to be a snag in her explanation somewhere. She put some distance between them before rushing to make the final blow. And when she was about to strike, the doctor took a shot. There must be a piece of evidence that contradicts this line of thinking. She put some distance between... And so... Is it that she can't put distance between herself because of the stuff here? The folding wall and all that? Um, that's the only thing I can think of, because it was a pretty small room. Hmm. Or... I have no idea. I guess it's this? I have no idea. This is the piece of evidence that destroys your logic. What is that? A folding screen. I would like to point out to the I would like to point to the court's attention the hole in this folding screen. <sighs> yeah, I got the feeling the police overlooked that. It looks like you already know what I'm talking about. Who, where, what? <laughs> Mr. Wright, your explanation, please. Are these two really that clueless. <laughs> the bullet went through the defendant's safe first. Then the folding screen. It passed through at a height of approximately eight inches off the ground, which means when the shot was fired, Maya, I mean the defendant, was not getting ready to strike, but was actually squatting low to the ground. Order, order! Th this changes everything! Please look at this diagram of the crime scene. The victim, Dr. Gray, was here when he fired the shot, and the bullet hit this folding screen. It hit at about this location, about eight inches off the ground. At this time, the defendant was in this area. I'm guessing... Here? I have no idea. That's right. She was standing here, near the folding screen. Wait a second. 
We'd know the defendant was close to the ground based on the height of the bullet hole. But how can you gauge the distance from that? Isn't it possible that the defendant was standing much closer to the victim? No. That's impossible. But why? You, of all people, should know the answer to that question, Miss Von Karma. If she were shot from somewhere closer, there would be gunpowder burns present. However, there is nothing of the sort around the bullet hole of this costume. So, when he took the gun out, the spirit, I guess, backed up to try and get away from him. So he fired, and she lunged at him in self-defense, I guess? I don't know. <sighs> Curse you, Mr. Phoenix Wright, you! <laughs> hmm. I believe it has now begun. It has now been proven that the defendant was standing a ways from the victim when, when she was shot at. But do you think this has changed the defendant's situation? It doesn't change anything, it changes everything. Um, I'm going to say it changes everything just because it helps our case. Honestly, Your Honor, this changes everything. The prosecution has claimed that the defendant was aimed, aiming to kill by stabbing. If that were true, delivering the final strike with a knife would be ideal. Exactly what I've been thinking this whole time. However, where and what was the defendant doing at the time? Squatting all the way by the folding screen? Exactly. If Maya Fey was the real murderer, why would she be by the folding screen instead of preparing to strike? <laughs> Upon further consideration, it does make very little sense. Yeah, I figured there had to be a reason. Sure you did, Gumshoe. Figuring things out and proving the logic behind everything is your job! <laughs> Alright, with this, the rest of the trial should be in the bag. We have three days of this, Phoenix. Don't get comfortable. We always have to use all three days. Blast radius of disaster? You are such a smart man, Mr. Phoenix Wright. To think that you've been able to take a completely hopeless case to this point. Now I know why Papa had a tough time with you. Hmm, you amuse me. Is that a good thing? Of all the things to inherit, why did it have to be that smarmy smile? Detective. How dare you damage my perfect logic! Huh? How is it my fault? You can start by repairing. You can start repairing by standing. You can start repairing your standing by first removing those three strand. that three strand goatee. Oh, and rest assured, your punishment will come later. Punishment? Well then, Your Honor, I think I've had all I can take of this defendant's face. I think it's time to call in the next witness. Next witness? That's gotta be Lotta. Very well. The court will take a five minute recess. After we reconvene, we will hear from the next witness. I wonder what she meant by she's gonna punish Detective Gumshoe. Okay. Hey, I'm doing pretty well in this case so far. Nice. And we'll continue in the next episode. So, hmm. So just trying to think. What made Dr. Gray antsy enough that he felt he had to take his gun out and shoot at Maya? Was it that... Because the whole point of the channeling was because he wanted the nurse's spirit to sign a waiver saying that she was the one who caused the malpractice so he could get his business back together. I'm guessing that she refused. And because of that, he, she was like, like, I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that it was your fault or something. Well, everybody already thought it was his fault anyway. But I guess she said something threatening to him. And... I don't know. I'm just trying to think because obviously any being there plays a role in this. I'm just trying to figure out how. 
But anyway, I'm going to end this episode here. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys next time.